Hello. Uh, been working a lot lately with the Raspberry Pi, little mini computers that are inexpensive and a uh, great tool to teach programming uh, for students and a lot of fun to play with. But um, getting started with them, I found there's just not a lot of consistent documentation on how to set them up, get them out of the box, get them ready to go, get them ready to program. There's um, a lot of this geeky stuff, they sort of, there's this underlying assumption that you're already a geek, so it's real easy to, you just take it out and you just do stuff and it works. And I'm finding there was a lot of missing information. So th what I thought I'd do is provide for you a little bit of a walkthrough on the first steps to get the system set up and ready to go. Uh, today I'll be working with a Raspberry Pi 2. They just recently came out and they're a faster, better processor, more memory than the original Raspberry, so I'm super excited about it. I've played with them a little bit. They're noticeably, I read an article that said they're six times faster than the original Raspberry, and you really notice the difference. So the kit I'm working with today is a Canna kit. And they do a really nice job of putting together a little kit that has some good get you started stuff. Not super fancy, but it kind of gets you out of the box and ready to go. Um, I just looked on Amazon and I found them anywhere from about $70 to $80, which considering the Raspberry Pi itself is supposed to retail for about $35, really, really super good deal. So I thought I'd give you the true out of the box experience. So uh, I'm going to take my sharp object here and open up the box and take a quick peek at what's inside and then we'll move on to assembly and then talk you through some of the basic steps that it's going to take to get it ready to go. So inside the box we've got an HDMI cable which is handy dandy. On these uh, little computers the output, the monitor for them is, uses an HDMI which is great because any TV will work. A lot of newer computer monitors have HDMI out and there are adapters available to go from HDMI to VGA. So that's uh, already provided for you handy dandy. Uh, there's little bits and pieces that we have to uh, start doing our programming and working with uh, components because these allow us to interact with electronic components. There's a piece called a breadboard which is how we create basic circuits and plug things in real simply. So set that out and you get a little bag of electronic goodies. So uh, some resistors, some LEDs and some push buttons to kind of get you started on some basic programming. Uh, really fun. You can add more stuff later. And like this little breadboard's good to get started with but it's kind of tiny so it won't be long you'll want a better one. But it's handy. You can use more than one breadboard. You're thinking, what's a breadboard? Yeah, we'll get to that down the road. Another big chunk of stuff we get is a bunch of little patch cables to connect our Raspberry Pi uh, outputs and inputs into the breadboard and to the different components. So that's handy dandy and ready to go. Then we get, oh, more boring stuff. There's a power supply. What's great about these little computers is they use what is essentially a cell phone charger. So it's got a micro USB connector on it. It looks an awful lot like a cell phone charger, which you could probably use it to charge your phone if it's not an Apple device. But uh, ready to go. That's in the box. And let's see, little stuff. We have a uh, Wi-Fi adapter, which is handy dandy. I'm going to use, to get started, and I recommend you do the same thing, to get started out of the box we're going to use an Ethernet cable and plug it in directly to the wall or into your router at home. So that's how we'll get started. But down the road we can move to uh, installing the Wi-Fi card and then we don't need to have it tethered to the wall with Ethernet. So really cool that they included that in the kit. There's a little case, uh -huh, easy open case, a box, that contains our little computer and it's super easy to get out of the box but it's a little clear plastic housing so that's ready to go it pops apart it snaps around our Raspberry Pi down the road 
So we'll set that aside. We're just going to put this little fella together. Another small item that comes in the box, absolutely no instructions, are two small heat sinks. And these heat sinks help dissipate the heat from the graphics chip and the main microprocessor chip on the board. Uh, there's a, a handy dandy included instruction kit set that actually tells you next to nothing, which is one reason I made this video, just to help you out a little bit. So we'll set that nearby, maybe open it up. And everyone should have a small Swiss Army knife. That's, you know, included um, in your stuff that you need to get. Everybody's got to have one. So let's open up the computer itself. Yeah, really. <laughs> the computer itself is in this tiny little box. It's amazing. So we'll pop him out of there. And uh, in the pink envelope is the micro SD card. And that's essentially equivalent to the hard drive of the computer. So that's where the operating system is going to be located in all our files. So I'm going to open up that little container and pop out the micro SD card. And it's about the size of your fingernail and is capable of holding, I believe, eight gigabytes of data, which is pretty phenomenal. Lastly, the meat of the matter is our handy dandy Raspberry Pi logic board. This is an entire computer. No way. <laughs> yes way. It's an entire computer. It's basically a computer on a chip. So uh, the uh, Broadcom folks make a ARM microprocessor that is the entire brains of the operation. There's another chip here that I believe is graphics, not sure. So there's that guy. Can you see it? It's an amazing little critter. This new uh, Raspberry Pi 2 has four USB ports as opposed to the two that were on the original. So I really like that we have more USB. It didn't take long to run out of USB ports on this thing. It has a sound out that can also, I believe, double as a video out. I haven't played with that. And your HDMI port and a power port. There's a couple of slots on here that will, you can connect a Raspberry Pi camera to and another, like a display device, like a, a, a little LCD camera that are uh, LCD screen. Those are available at different sources. And there's a row of input-output pins that we'll be using to do our programming with. So those are handy dandy. Okay, so we've got the little guy out of the box. Oh, also you get these neat little cards that show really handy. They show the input-output um, pins on your computer. And then a, boy, this would have helped me out, a resistor color chart. As we get further into this, we'll use resistors. And resistors are coded by the colored bands that are on them and we'll need to learn to identify them. So it's really handy of them to include those cards in the kit. So I'm going to get my Raspberry Pi ready to connect into the case. First thing I'll do is attach the little um, heat sinks to the processor chips. So I'm going to peel off this little layer of protective backing on this adhesive eventually. Yes, there we go. And I'm going to carefully seat it onto the chip. So it's pretty straight and covers the entire chip as well as possible. Press it down kind of firmly and it scooches around a little bit. Really doesn't matter which direction you make the little fins go. They're square so it could go either way. Again, using my handy dandy Swiss Army knife to attempt to peel the tape off. Attempting to peel the tape off now as we speak. There we go. And that goes on this small chip near the USB ports. So I'll stick that on there and I'll be all neat and organized and make the fins go the same direction. Push that down so it's well seated. Now we've got some cooling put in. So then the card, uh, the board goes into the uh, base of the mount. And there are, uh, you need to line up the appropriate ports. 
The SD card goes out of the bottom here, the, the hard drive, so to speak, of the device, and there's a slot in the bottom that is designed to accommodate that card. So we'll make sure we put our device in so that SD card slot is visible through there. Awesome. Then we just snap the top on. There's a big slot here for what's called the GPIO ports, which are these pins on here. That's general purpose input output. And that's how we get data, I guess, into and out of the Raspberry Pi to work with our electronics. So I'm going to snap that case together. And it goes ker-snap. And it's got the slot for the GPIO, for the um, uh, external monitor, for the uh, camera uh, add-on, which is about a $25 part. So all that stuff's ready to go. There's your slots. GPIO, USB, and uh, Ether. So there, that's all ready to go. Here's our HDMI. So we're kind of looking like we might be getting close to ready to fire this little guy up. So the first thing we're going to have to do is give it some memory, give it a hard drive to work with. And I'm kind of air quoting the hard drive thing. Um, this is a solid state uh, storage device, so it's not like a con conventional hard drive that, that spins. It's just electronic. So I place the card in the slots with the copper pins to the top of the device, push it in, and it will snap to click. If I want to remove it, I just push down and it ejects it. So if I push in, it should snap and seat into the uh, receiver for the card. So that's good to go. Then the next step I'm going to do is uh, plug in the Ethernet cable. I guess it doesn't really have to occur in this order, but I'm going to plug in Ethernet because we'll uh, take a wee break here and then hook up so I, I can show you what you'll see on screen as you fire up your computer. But first we'll get everything ready to go and then you'll be able to see what you would see on your screen once we start up this device. Uh, next step, I'm going to plug in a standard keyboard. This is uh, just you know any keyboard you have laying around that's USB. So it's got the USB connector on it. This happens to be an HP keyboard. And any keyboard you have laying around will work. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the USB ports. I have a USB optical mouse. I'm going to plug it in. The system, as we install it, will detect these devices. But we're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking once we get the, uh, the computer up and running. So that's basically ready to go. We, if you were hooking it up to a TV, which we sort of will be doing here in a bit, we'll unfurl our HDMI cable, taking off the infernal twist ties, pull the little safety covers off, and it goes on this side of the device next to the power supply. So I'm going to plug it in there wiggle it in until it's nice and firm, and then this end would go to a computer monitor or TV HDMI input. So that's all ready to go. And then the last piece we will need is our handy dandy cell phone type power supply. And it will go into power, and the last phase of our operation would be then to plug it in next to the HDMI cable, uh, uh, having the right proper po polarity. They're kind of shaped in a D shape, so they'll only go in one direction. And if the gods are smiling, we should see some lights light up. And it may not because we don't have an HDMI uh, monitor hooked up to it. So. That gets us to the point where we're just about ready to go. Later on, we'll talk more about connecting to the breadboard and actually doing some wiring. But I wanted to get you guys ready to get this thing out of the box, take care of some basic programming, install the operating system, and kind of be ready to go. And then when we are ready to go, we can use this breadboard connector 
to make it easier to plug in pins to our, our breadboard. This will connect our Raspberry Pi to the breadboard and then we can plug our components into it. So that, that'll be a kind of another phase of this, this project. So for now, I think we're ready to go. I'm going to show you what this looks like connected to a monitor and then walk you through the steps that you need to go through to make sure everything works just the way we want it. Hi, well we're back. Uh, I wanted to show you now the next steps. We got our Raspberry Pi all put together, ready to boot up. And I've got it sitting here ready to go. And I'm going to switch over to the screen view so you can see what happens as this machine comes online. And I'll talk to you about what choices to make as it progresses through the installation. So be right back with a uh, screenshot of this thing. I'll go ahead and plug it in and we'll see what happens. So cross your fingers. And we should see a big square of colors that says it detects the monitor and everything looks good, it's happy. So it adjusts the video a little bit. And it's opening up the partition manager. There we go. It worked. Uh, so now, <laughs> Lucky you, right? So you fire this thing up, you get it out of the box, and you're sort of like, uh, which one of these do I want? Which is, it's kind of nice to have these options, and there are a bunch of them, but the, the option that you want to probably start out with is the operating system called Raspbian. And Raspbian is a, a we call it a build of Linux that's designed especially to run on the Raspberry Pi. So that's the best choice. So I will go ahead and select it. Uh, while I'm here, I'll probably have to change this stuff again, but I'm going to switch to English US keyboard, and the keyboard's going to be English. I don't think it's going to affect us at this point. One of the things we'll have to do later on is probably select the proper keyboard, and that's uh, something I'll cover with you. Okay, so I'm ready to get started on the installation. I've selected Raspbian. And I will select this install. And it says, now wait a minute, human. You're going to overwrite the SD card, the storage device, that, that hard drive that this thing uses. So you know what? We're OK with that. We're going to take the noobs boot system off, and we're going to replace it with a Raspbian system. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. And it started its download of the system. And during the uh, time that this is installing, you'll see various things pop up on the screen. But it's downloading the operating system from the internet and installing it on your SD card. When it's all done, and, and we'll show you that here in a bit, so we're going to kind of cut and come back. When it's all done, you will see a, a selection like a utility that will make our other setup choices in. So in the interest of saving you uh, a bit of time watching this thing download, uh, we'll cut away and come back to it and I'll show you uh, what your next steps are. So uh, meanwhile, if you're doing this following me at home, um, just enjoy the little screens that pop up and uh, get a cup of coffee. I'll be back. Well, hey, we're back. Uh, if you've been patient enough and the internet gods have smiled on you, um, your installation might be done. And so that's where I'm at with my Raspberry Pi device right now. So we're going to cut back over to that screen and I'll show you what you'll see when you have completely installed the operating system. Okay, so what we have here is it says OS is installed. And I think we only put one in, but hey, that's fine. So uh, are you getting the screen OK? Yeah, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. And what's going to happen is a utility will come up that's going to let us finish our job. So I'll say OK. And it reboots. Now, this is uh, all the screen craziness that you see flying by is Linux loading up. The four raspberries along the top tell us that are, there are, this is a quad core chip. So there are four microprocessors inside of one chip. So that's the, in, that's the indication that you get from those four raspberries. 
uh, when any of your computers, if you have a Mac or a PC, this kind of stuff goes on behind the scenes anyway, but they hide it from you. But on a Linux machine, you see all this ugly stuff. And if once you get really kind of good at it, those little lines that fly by might even mean stuff to you that will help you troubleshoot. So where we end up is this utility. It's called Raspy Config. And later on, we'll learn how to pull up Raspy Config on our own. But uh, they really did a nice job of creating this installer because it says, let's put the system on, bring a human to where they're ready to go, and start making some choices to uh, set up the system properly. Um, so as we look through this, um, I started moving my mouse, but nothing works. So this, set your clock back a little bit. This is a command line interface environment. So I'm going to have to use the arrow keys on my keyboard. So if I arrow down, it goes down the list. If I arrow up, it goes up the list. Big surprise, right? So the first thing let's do, what are we going to do first? Let's set the uh, time zone. So I'm going to go to item number four, which is internationalization options. Notice the British spelling on it. These computers were made and developed and engineered in Great Britain. So there's a lot of things initially about them that sort of have a British feel, including the keyboard, which is another thing we'll change here in a bit. So I'm going to go down to number four and hit enter, and it takes me into the next menu. So uh, obviously then uh, one of my options is change time zone. So I'm going to hit enter there. And it thinks a little bit and it says, well, hey human, uh, where you at? And I'm going to say I'm in the U.S. So off we go. So since you're in the U.S., which time zone would you like to use? I'm in Kansas, so let's use the central time zone. And it sets the time zone up for us. Uh, another thing that we'll do in the same area of internationalization options is set the locale to be United States. Um, these computers are capable of using many different languages. So if you happen to be in a Hispanic, a Spanish speaking country, you might pick Spanish. We're going to pick the good old US of A again. And that gives our language settings on the device to say, let's not spell color C-O-L-O-U-R. Let's spell it C-O-L-O-R. So I'm going to select change locale and hit enter and it says, well, here's a bunch of possibilities. And if I scroll down, I'm using the down arrow to scroll down again and look at all these languages and locales we have. It's crazy. When you see the asterisk here, that says E-N-G-B. UTF-8. UTF-8 is a type of language Unicode layout. And that's all geeky. But it, this is what we want to prefer a UTF type uh, locale, but we don't want EN. So I'm going to hit, they don't tell you this, but I'm going to hit the space bar and it deselects it. Nowhere in the menu does it say this. They assume you're already a geek. Fortunately for you guys, I've been there and done that. I am a geek. I want to go down to ENUS. So, and as I mentioned earlier, I want to select the UTF-8 option. I'll hit spacebar again, and then I'm going to, uh, let's see, I think I tab, how do I tab out? Uh, okay, so I hit tab, <laughs> how do I tab out? I know, the tab key. I hit tab, and it brought me out of my blue menu down to where it says OK on the screen. And so then I'll hit Enter. And it says, well, which locale would you like to be? Well, I've deselected the UK keyboard. And so my really on, only option that I have left is the English US, UTF-8. So I'm going to hit Enter there. And it goes in behind the scenes and makes some changes for us and selects the UTF-8 locale. We're going to have one other adjustment to make at this screen as soon as this completes. Okay, so we're going to go back to internationalization options and we're going to go to change keyboard layout. So I'm going to go to number 13 and hit enter. And uh, it's doing some evil green, gray screen stuff. Okay, now 
the reason we're going to all this trouble is these devices, again, were made in the UK. And a UK keyboard, for one example, if I hit uh, shift at sign, which is the two key on the American keyboard, that produces an asterisk on a UK keyboard. Don't ask me why, it just does. So if I can find my actual keyboard in this list, I know I have an HP keyboard. And so I found the HP stuff, and I think the last time I just selected, it's not the Omnibook, it has some keyboard layouts for uh, notebooks. This uh, particular part is an SK2885, and all I have is a 9020. So I think I just selected uh, Hewlett Packard Internet Keyboard, and that seemed to work. I think that was my best, my closest option. Uh, so I go up to it, and I select Enter. And now I get to pick a keyboard layout. And uh, you notice there's a number of those. Uh, I probably don't want Cherokee, for instance. Um, I will, and I can select Dvorak if you're into that sort of thing. I can use a Macintosh keyboard. Um, I just, oh, I just want plain old English US. Sorry guys, took you down the rat hole there. So English US, standard US keyboard. Hit enter. And this is asking a particular geeky thing of a key combo that sometimes programmers use. I don't see any need. We're just gonna use the default for the keyboard layout. So we hit enter there again. Man, no compose keys. We're not doing anything fancy. Uh, we're not gonna use control alt backspace to terminate the X server. More appropriate for the uber geek type folk. So I'm gonna tap, or left arrow over to yeah. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep it on no. And hit enter. And uh, it'll go ahead and set the uh, keyboard up. And uh, there's one other thing we've got to do when this finishes, and then we are ready to start using our Raspberry Pi device to do some programming. So the last thing we wanna do, um, you know, the black screen with the text and so on that we had before, that is um, fine if you're running a server and, or if you've really gotten good with the command line interface. Probably not there yet, we're gonna get better, but we're not there yet. So what we really wanna have happen is when I start up my Raspberry Pi, I get a nice pretty desktop environment. And that's called an X window. Um, but I will select, just to make it a lot easier for us as beginners, I'm going to go ahead and go to, uh, uh, where is it? Oh, enable boot to desktop or scratch. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and select, we want this to go ahead and boot into a graphical user environment so we'll be more comfortable getting around in it. So I'm going to make that selection on number three. And I am going to say the second option, which is log in as the user pi, which is the default user on this device. Your default user is pi pi. Your default password is raspberry. So kind of hang on to that. I'm going to do a desktop login, and so hit enter there. It sets that up, and I believe I'm done. So I hit the right arrow to go out of my menu. I'm gonna hit right arrow again to finish and hit enter. There's not a lot of documentation here, but this is why I'm making this video to help you guys out. So I hit finish and it says, would you like to reboot now? Why, sure, why not? So I'm gonna hit reboot. It's gonna go ahead and exit the system and restart and what you should see is your brand new shiny desktop environment of Raspbian which is our operating system we selected, and a Raspbian X window environment, which is the graphical user interface. So we've got our little color um, field screen again. We get the opportunity to go into recovery mode, and then it's gonna go into its boot sequence, where you're gonna see the uh, white text on black background. It's doing a bunch of diagnostics and kind of getting itself ready to go connecting itself to all the peripheral devices that are on the network or on the uh, device itself. 
So once it finishes all that, it'll load up a pretty desktop environment for us, we hope. So it's setting up a variety of fun things, saying OK. Sometimes it'll say this didn't go so well. Most of the time it doesn't hurt. So I can see my mouse pointer appearing in the center of a black screen, so it's getting ready to load the graphical environment. And there's our Raspberry. And there's the rest of our desktop. So now we're ready to go to get started with a graphical user interface. And feel free to explore the, ver the various things that are on here, like a web browser. There's a, a link here to Raspberry Pi resources that has a got a lot of good information for us. We can go to the web browser and surf the net. There's some games built in. Ooh, Minecraft. Hey, <laughs> some Python games. So this is kind of where we're ready to go and get started. If you're done playing, go to Shutdown and choose to either shut down or reboot. I'm going to call it a, a session here, so I'm going to go ahead and select Shutdown, and there'll be some more videos to kind of say, what do we do next? So hang in there, have fun.